Hey everyone and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to take you through what I think the best way for you to prep your week leading up to your high rocks races. We're going to go through three sections. We're going to go through how you should train in the build up to your race on that week. We're going to go through if your nutrition should change and how should it change if so in the build up to your race. And then we're going to go through race day itself. What time you should eat before the race when you should arrive at the venue, when you should warm up, etc. Okay, I'm going to cover everything for you. I'm even going to throw in a bonus of supplementation um, if you're interested in that. So, without further ado, let's get straight into it and go through our first section. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to talk to you about is training in the build-up to your race. Now, all the examples I'm using today, I'm assuming you're racing on the Saturday. Now, I fully appreciate a lot of you will be racing on the Sunday or even the Monday in the case of Olympia. But the principle will always remain the same. I'm just going to shift these over one or two days, depending on when my race is, okay? Now that's out of the way, let's get into the training. So, first two days, Monday and Tuesday, I want you to train at 80%. Now, what the fuck does that mean, okay? That means, essentially, I want you to take what you usually do in your program and just drop 20% off the volume, essentially. For example, say I do a 40-minute mixed modal piece on the week prior to this week for my program, on the Monday. On the Monday this week, I'm gonna do a mixed modal piece with a bit of intensity still, but I'm gonna drop 20%, so therefore I'm gonna do 32 minutes-ish. Obviously, you don't have to be too um, pernickety with it and be like, oh, I must train for 30 minutes and 43 seconds or anything like that. It's not important, okay? But it's a general rule. 80%, same applies to the Tuesday. If it's a strength session, 20% less volume, 80% total, okay? Monday and Tuesday covered. Wednesday, that's going to be rest and active recovery. So if possible, try not just to sit on your ass all day, even if you're really busy at work. Try and get up and walk at least intermittently. You can do mobility work. You can get sports massage. It's probably a good time to do that if you're going to do that this week. All the other recovery protocols we know of, that's not what this video is about. You know what works for you. Okay, that's your Wednesday. Thursday is your last session if you're competing on the Saturday, okay? Now, as you can see from my notes, I want intensity to still be high, but volume to drop, okay? This is where we're not looking to elicit any sort of DOMS. We don't want to deplete our glycogen stores too much. I don't want any crazy central nervous system fatigue either. I want you to be fully recovered from this on the Friday. You shouldn't feel too much on the Friday at all, okay? So an example of this that I've used with athletes before, and this all depends on the athlete, of course, but the start of the session could be three to five rounds, 10 calorie air bike sprint, uh, five burpee broad jumps. They're performed as a sprint, so it's hard effort, so intensity, but they're gonna get three minutes rest to recover before the next round. And obviously the total volume there is still quite low. Even if you do five rounds, 25 burpee broad jumps. If you're doing a high rock, especially solos, that shouldn't be anything crazy to you at all. Okay, but don't just copy what I do do what works for you, try and make it similar style to the program you've been doing because it is important that we don't try anything too new uh, this week because when you try new things, new stimulus often can really cause muscle soreness and DOMS. We don't want that, okay? Don't try anything new. All right, Friday, again, is going to be rest and active recovery. If you live further afield or even closer to a field, you might be traveling to the city the event is in. Obviously, in this case, that's London. Um, if you are traveling, you might be on your feet a bit anyway, but just try and walk around, mobility, whatever, at the hotel, whatever you need to do, okay? Relax, travel, rest. Obviously, then Saturday is going to be your race day, um, and then hopefully you'll be celebrating your PBs and you're not too hungover on the Sunday, and that might be you looking around the city, traveling back, whatever. Sunday's basically a free hit. I would suggest maybe doing a little bit of recovery in the days after a high rock, just so uh, you don't end up feeling too bad. But there you go. That's your training throughout your whole week. That's that covered. Let's talk about nutrition. So let me keep this very easy for you. Monday through to Thursday night, we'll say Thursday night. Keep it the same. Monday, Thursday night, the same as what you'd usually do. Assuming it's not a load of shite, just keep it the same, okay? Don't try anything new on race week. We don't want to be giving you upset stomachs or anything like that. It's going to hamper your performance. From Thursday night through to Saturday, I'm not going to go into too much detail on this, but just increase your carbohydrate intake above what you'd usually do, okay? So if you're thinking about what you can eat to help carb load, this is going to benefit us in endurance activities, such as high rocks, 
So don't go too crazy. You don't need to eat a kilo of pasta a day. Just increase it a little bit uh, and you should be fine. I don't need thinking too much about this. Another thing, a little side note, this is why I've said it's optional, but I get asked a lot about supplementation for high rocks. Now, one thing you can do is nitrate supplementation. That's actually what my dissertation was on. So I know a thing or two about that. Now, one thing this can do, nitrates essentially dilate the blood vessels, allow more oxygenated blood uh, towards the muscles. It also helps with lactate buffering also, which is good in the high rocks. Uh, and I particularly looked at the performance on cycling time trial, but there's been a lot of studies into running and intermittent exercise as well to show the benefits. One thing is pretty much universally agreed upon, to the best of my knowledge, is that having one beta shot or nitrates before your high rocks and that's it is not going to do sod all okay what you need to do is supplement it at least five days prior to your event hence why this covers the whole week up until saturday and including race morning now the best form of nitrate supplementation in my opinion is the beat it shots because these are actually going to give you a better dose you can get from beat reduce they're easily attainable on amazon they're not too expensive beat it shots are the ones you're looking for here if you want to do this what i will say it's not overly essential it's not going to knock minutes off your time but if you are interested in supplements then that's what i recommend okay so we've covered nutrition we've briefly gone through i just want carbs to increase from thursday pm to your saturday morning and then nitrates if you want them last thing that we need to go through is what you're going to do on race day now your pre-race meal whatever time you compete should be two to three hours before you race okay this will give it enough time to digest our food just so we have no issues when we race. Choose something that is easily digestible. Um, if it's in the morning, things like bagels, etc. You don't want anything that's going to be sitting too heavy on the stomach. You want to have a good amount of carbs, a little bit of fat too, um, and a little bit of protein as you should have pretty much all meals anyway. Okay. Obviously, if you are competing at 8am, by the way, I don't expect you to be up at 4.45 to eat at 5am. Okay. Obviously, use some common sense. Make sure you do get your sleep the night before as well, because sleep is very, very important, as we know. Okay, next thing will be when you arrive at the venue. Now, I do not want you arriving at the venue hours in advance. It should be no more than 60 to 90 minutes. Why? Because when I go into the venue, regardless of whether I want to or not, and it's the same for most people, you can't control this, it's gonna be a spike of adrenaline. Now, what's gonna happen, probably after about two to three hours, is it's going to be an adrenal dump. Now, if that adrenal dump occurs when you're in the race, or at the start of the race in particular, you're gonna feel like you've got less energy, you're not gonna perform as well, you're gonna hate life, and you're just gonna feel like you've wasted your 100 pounds on your entry fee, okay? It might not ruin your race completely, but it might just not make it as optimal and might be the difference between you getting that PB and not. So it's worth thinking about. That's why 60 to 90 minutes gives you time to check in, bag drop, warm up, soak in the atmosphere whatever it gives you perfect time to do that and then enjoy the race now your last food or drink intake if desired is going to be 30 to 60 minutes before whether that's a banana whether that's a pre-workout if you're a psycho a knocko that sort of thing energy drink whatever whatever you like to do before you work out 30 to 60 minutes before is the time to do this if you're doing the nitrate supplementation again i'd say 60 minutes um for the beta shot as well now, last thing is going to be when you go to the warm-up zone, I recommend that it's 15 to 20 minutes before your start time. Because you want to be thorough-ish, you also want to be getting out of the warm-up zone probably three to five minutes before your race starts. Um, so therefore, this gives you enough time to get what you need to do done. With regards to what you do in your warm-up, I want you doing similar warm-ups to what you've been doing throughout your program, okay? I also want you to try and touch the stations if you can. A little bit of ski, a little bit of sleds, lunges, farmers carry, etc., etc., etc. Just so we get our technique nailed, we're efficient, so we can roll into those stations in the race and have a good old time, get a PB. Okay. Now, hopefully, after all of this, you've taken all this into account. You're going to get the PB you're looking for for Saturday night. You can have a few beers, whatever, um, and obviously enjoy it. Do more. That's how it goes. All right. So. All that's left for me to say is I wish you the very best of luck if you are competing in High Rocks soon. If you have any questions at all, even if you think they're stupid, drop them in the comments down below and I'll answer them as quickly as I can. 
if I don't answer, then hit me up on social media, of course. If you like the Hyrox content and you want to see more of it, please do drop a like on the video, um, especially since it's a smaller YouTube channel. Every like goes a much, uh, a much longer way than it will on some of the bigger channels, okay? So good luck in your Hyrox, and I will see you in the next video.